can feel uh-huh. like 80 rats in my Marys. Me and Drizzy back to back is getting scary. If you fucking with my eyes, just don't come near me. Get out my way. Put some bands all on your head like Jason Terry. Whoa. Another episode, man. You already know how we getting down. Malik Faison is your host today, man. Listeners and viewers, tune in. My YouTube channel will be below. Man, let's get straight into it, man. Episode 38, 138, however you want to call it. The culture. The culture. So we're going to get right into it. My topic today, first and foremost, top 20 best black movies. That's going to be hard. I'm going to leave some out. Y'all going to be tight. Um, secondly, Snowfall or Power? I feel like this conversation needs to be had and needs to be had right now. Right now. Um, lastly, would you rather get even or get over it? Hey, let's get into it. So I'm going to dive straight into this. Top 20 best black movies for me. I know I'm going to leave a lot out that y'all probably, you know, would, would, would kill me over later. But this is my list. Not in order, but this is my list of top best black movies in my lifetime. Or just in general, I feel like. Juice. Friday. Do the Right Thing. Belly. Menace of Society. Boys in the Hood. Coming to America. Color Purple. Roots. Purple Rain. House Party. Paid in Full. Love Jones. Poetic Justice, Set It Off, The Wiz, New Jack City, Training Day, Bad Boys, The Wood, and lastly, Cooley High. Cooley High. I felt like this was a real, real, real good topic for me to bring up because just through our lifetime of movies, I feel like black movies has stood the test of time, and I feel like black movies have the best movies. We have the best movies bar none. And these movies I name are just all classes to me and just they 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 represent a time in in the culture. No matter what time it, it came out, it just represents a time in the culture where these movies were just they were it. So for instance, one of my favorite movies on this list like preferably is of course is Juice, but Friday, like if Friday is not on your top 20 Best black movies of all time, you don't know anything about black movies. I feel like Friday is, I'm not going to say it's the the most prominent on this list. I don't think so, but I feel like it's the most uh, resonated on this list. And like how, you know, how how we really were raised on and then grew up in the black community and in and, and poverty as well, you know, and going through struggles in certain situations. And you have your neighborhood bully, you have... You people that's real chill. You have people like Stanley, who is a the suburban. You know, think he better the black guy. Think he better than everyone. You got uh, Craig's sister, the hairstylist. You got Smokey and Craig, just the chill, chill, laid back dudes, and around the neighborhood. You know, then you have uh, <laughs> then you have Ezel, the the neighborhood Vanessa. You have. All the all the like little gems in it with the father and the mother. Then you have the when they was talking about Kool Aid and getting high and things like that. It's just it's just a lot of culture in that movie itself. And moving on from that, like uh, one of my favorite movies, like culturally for my culture and best black movies, one of them is Do the Right Thing. Do the Right Thing. It spoke so many volumes. Spike Lee is a genius because it spoke so many volumes of, of course, of how we how we come up and how things are, but just just the just the just the power of our people and how much power do we we have within our word and within our actions and how powerful our culture is. Everyone tends to tends to look down on us in some ways and some in some facets but always wanna be us. You know, a lot the the whole the whole culture that you see today, hip hop is the number one genre of music. I feel like it has been for a long time because everything we do, <laughs> everything we do is is replicated by somebody else, and it's originated by a black person. You feel me? So I just feel like that's that's just real. Do the right thing. It just spoke so many volumes on race and just equality and how we treat each other and how we should be moving. And then 
you don't have a best black movies if you don't have color purple roots or purple rain in there. You, I don't want to hear it. If you don't have roots, color purple or purple rain in your top top 20, 10, however you want to delve it down. If you don't at least have them in your top 20, you really do not know your culture. Or, and it, it's preference wise, of course, but I'm just talking about in general. Like black movies are all time top 20. And I feel like color purple, roots, and purple rain, they have to be solidified in there. Have to. Paid in full, that's a legendary movie. Of Minister Society, legendary movie. Probably probably my my favorite hood movie, black movie. And I'm just out of the cat I'm a categorize that a little bit within the black movie, but mine's is probably Belly. I felt like Belly Stood a test before his time with Hype Williams and how a movie was directed and a black movie was directed. It felt like, it just felt like you were in the movie and it was just kings on kings and having Nas and DMX, two powerful, powerful rappers and powerful, powerful influence in the game. I feel like it didn't get any better than that and just how everything was just pictured so perfectly to the music, to the scenery, to the to the actors that were in it. You had, you know, you had Faith. I mean, I, I said Faith Evans. You had T. Boz in the movie. You had, you had other, other main characters in the movie. It just felt like, it just felt like, of course, a movie, but it just felt so real. It just felt so real. You just felt within that movie. That's probably the greatest. I feel like that's probably one of the greatest intros into, in movies ever. I, I don't care what anybody says. Hype Williams destroyed that. Destroyed the destroyed the look of Belly. Like I love Belly. Of course, paid in full. Of course, Boys in the Hood. Boys in the Hood is one of my favorite as well. Um, then you get on to the to the love bag, and also you have said it all. But then and then you get into the love bag and Love Jones. If if that's not your top, I don't know what you're doing either. Lorenz Tate. Love Jones is legendary movie. Legendary. The Wood, The Wood is one of my favorite movies as well, favorite black movies and movies in general. And it's just, The Wood is just, you know, you just with your homeboys and really just expressing expressing how you guys grew up and things change and how 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 a moment of time changes to this moment of time and to your friends getting married, you all being the best man. It's just, it just, it was just legendary. And the come up of how, you know, how you and your friends how you and your friends really came about. Like, The Wood is a, a very classic movie. Very classic. And House Party, probably definitely, easily one of my favorite movies. Easily one of my favorite movies. Like, I loved Kid and Play and what it represented. And it was just like that fun party type of atmosphere. That's That movie really, really showed me, like, I wish I lived in the 90s because it was so lit. Like, it was just lit. Like, how they, just the environment of everything. And the House Party wasn't just getting shut down and... And this and that happened. It was just real genuine partying. And the style that the 90s had, I loved the nostalgic style. So, man, y'all tell me y'all favorites. Y'all comment below. Let me know if I miss something. But I feel like I, I hit the nail. I, I really hit this one. I, I feel like I, I did my job on this one. did my job. All right. Since we talking about what's the best and what's not, Snowfall or Power? So I'm gonna say this. I'm a huge power fan. I'm a huge power fan. I caught on to Snowfall late. Not like I didn't catch on to season one like when it came out. I caught on probably a little bit months after. But power, I was there from the beginning. And I feel like power, season one through four, is is really is really un, almost untouchable. Like I love power season one through four. I think season three or four was my favorite season. Um and and power power is just I'm gonna give kudos to power first, but power is just such a it just it gives you such a, a a crazy crazy good feeling because it's like you have these certain characters that you're so so in tune with over so 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 many amount of years, and it's just like it's like you grew up with this with this movie. I mean, I said with this movie with this show, and power and everything is represented in Fifty Cent the directing. It was just been it's just been flawless. I don't feel like. I don't feel like it's a lot of shows that can touch that touch power in that in that standpoint. But just one this one show that is that's based on true events about the crack epidemic in Los Angeles and it's called Snowfall. 
boy, oh boy. Directed by John Singleton. But I mean, he destroyed this. And Snowfall, Snowfall is just, I feel like it's better to me. I'm going to say to me. I feel like it's better solely off the fact that, of course, it's 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 a real, it's based on true events. So it, it, it keeps you in tune a little bit more. But on top of that, like every in each episode feels like the season finale. Like you do not know what to expect. They they give you they give you times three more of what you have in your mind that's gonna happen in the next episode. And it's just based on real things and it's very it's very knowledgeable. And it and, and Snowfall is just really telling you and educating you about things that went on back in the past when Ronald Reagan was president and in the eighties and the crack epidemic and how the world changed from well, the world changed from uh, drugs, you know. It was a war on drugs, and and it was the government trying to fund, you know, trying to fund <laughs> fund their war with with drug money, and it was just so low key. And I know I'm I know I'm giving you a little spoiler alerts, but I I just I love Snowfall, and this last episode of season three, episode ten, was probably the best. And I'm gonna be honest with you, besides The Wire, probably the best TV I've seen in a long time. And it was just based on the perception of how of how they put it and how they directed it and put things together, like it, it just went it just went back in the past and then it cycled through the whole thing of like two sides of life and things how how it can be and how it is now, and you had to watch it for yourself to understand. But I feel like Snowfall it just it, it just caught a body on the TV world like Snow. Snowfall is on FX. It's on like real television, showing you real gritty, real things, and it's just like it gives you anxiety watching it because you just you do not know what's going to happen next, and all these things are based on true events, things that are happening, things have that have happened, and it blows your mind that that you know what we what we look at as America and how it was back then. It was crazy. It was crazy. Like, it was a whole different world. Like, this this the era when Rayful Evans was living, Freeway Rick Ross, who is his, is, is based on off of. And that last episode gave me chills to my body. And I, I'm going to be real with you. I, I might have Snowfall with Power. And that's no discredit to Power because Power is an amazing show. But the thing about Snowfall, I really cannot. When I mean I really cannot predict what's going to happen next. They give you a, they give you a part of what happened in the last episode into full, and then they give you something way on the other side of things. Like if y'all haven't, I'm telling y'all, go watch Snowfall, catch up, and if you caught up, you know what I'm talking about with that season three, episode ten. Just in general, the whole the whole series of Snowfall, but that last episode, I'm telling you, it's different. It's, it's different. And that is, this conversation is going to be discussed more because I'm telling you, a lot more people are going to start watching Snowfall more and trying to understand and gauge what's going on with that. So I'm here to tell y'all, man, Snowfall the real deal. Y'all need to tune in. But lastly, let's let's mix it up. Let's mix it up. Let's make it a little fun. Let's make it a little fun. You know what I'm saying? Let's make it a little fun. Would you rather get even or get over it? Would you rather get even or get over it? So look, I know I'm not gonna put circumstantial things in, in into place, but just in general, it was a tough question for me because because like you start to gauge the things that you would get over and things that you might just get even with. But in the grand scheme, grand scheme of things, I would say get over it because you have life to live. No matter no matter what is going on. And no matter what happened, you still have tomorrow to 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 make it better. You still have tomorrow to keep going. Every day is not promised, so you stressing and 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 just worrying about what happened yesterday or what happened before. It's like it's easier said than done. Don't get me wrong; I'm just saying it. But I feel like for your mental, for your physical, for everything and yourself in general, it's best that you get over it and. Something that I gave first first thinking about, like get even or get over with, was my child and my mom and my father and you know what I'm saying my 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 family point point blank, like that's something I would 
I wouldn't probably get over it if it was something detrimental to happen to them. Like that's that might be the re that that definitely is the reason I could say get even. But other than that, like a relationship, I don't think get even is is I don't think get, getting even is cool because I'm not saying that it's cool because you may love this person and something may happen and you want you want them to taste get a taste of their own medicine. But I'm gonna be real with you, if you don't get over it and you just get even, is that really gonna help your mental your mental capacity? Or is it just going to keep on making you wonder and feel, why did I do this? Why why did I just leave? Or whatever the case may be, I feel like it's just more stressful just to get even. Just too, it's too many things going on in the world for you just to get even. You know what I'm saying? Like, people get even all the time and people lose their families, people lose their lives. You know? So it's just like, and people stress out over things. You know what I'm saying? Like, stress, stress can really kill you. Like it can really kill you. It's a real thing, so I would I would personally say, get over it. Like you know what I'm saying. Not not easier than said than done, but you know you just gotta get over it, man. Like it's another day to live. It's more. It's more. It's more life to live if God allows it for your life. But you know what I'm saying. Just you just got you gotta keep it pushing, man. You gotta keep it pushing. People show you their true colors each and every day, like. That's up to you if you really want to stress about it and, you know, get get over it or get even. I'm not really a truly petty person, so I would never just say, like, let me just get even. Like, it would have to be something real, real, real crazy for me to just, like, all right, let me, yeah. <laughs> but this is the Phase On View podcast coming at you every week, man. Let's get it. Hey, man, link in bio. Hey, channel is below. Hey, man, I love y'all, man. Tune in every week.